ton of templating and new functionality in um, modern pages or client-side pages, as we call them internally in the engine. Um, what you're looking at is one of the templates we will release is one of the Lookbook V2 um, templates. Uh, this one is called the landing. And what you're looking at here is actually uh, almost 99.999% template that we did a full round trip on. So we extracted the template from a source site and we applied it to my tenant and lo and behold, there is the page. Um, and what you're looking at this uh, template and or this site is that we have this vertical section here, which is a new functionality in modern pages. Um, and although the schema supported it and there was sort of rudimentary support for in the engine, we now have, uh, we believe now we have full functionality for um, vertical columns, which is actually quite cool. And um, so we extract them, we figure out all the web parts are in there, and then we also apply them. And to, to give you an idea of how to actually build up your, your client side page in a template to look to use a vertical column, I'm going to open this specific template that's uh, the site that you're looking at here. Uh, this is the, the tenant template. Now, if you used the provisioning engine before, you might be familiar with the whole concept of a provisioning template. A tenant template is nothing more than basically a wrapper around one or more provisioning templates, and we allow you also to create site collections. So when you apply this template to your tenant, we will actually first create the site collection for you and then apply the template to it. Um, so in this case, we're creating a communication site with a specific URL that we have parameterized here. And then we apply this main template, which is located here. So uh, if I scroll a bit down, and we go to the client side pages. Here you see the client page and you see there's a new type here, which is a one column vertical section. There's a two column vertical section um, and there's a three column vertical section um, allowing you to specify, okay, so this, this vertical column on the right, it's always on the right. And then there's an X number of columns to the left uh, of this uh, section. We also now allow you to set the vertical section emphasis so it's a separate emphasis from the section emphasis. So they can have different uh, background colors. So if you go back to the page, you see that the emphasis is a bit different here. This is neutral. It is called, it's like light gray in this theme. Um, then uh, you, you basically add your controls to your controls collection. And the only thing you have to keep in mind is to get your control in that vertical section. You, if you go a bit to the right here, you see it here in the end, put it in column, the last column effectively. So if it's a two uh, column vertical section, you will put it in column three because that's the vertical section. That's number three. So you have first two columns on the left and then the vertical section to the right. So put it in the last column and your web parts will show up there. So we did a lot of changes uh, the last couple of weeks to the engine. Um, um, it's, it's actually, I, I lost almost track of how many changes we've been, been doing. Uh, it is ton times more uh, it, it, better. It has been improved a lot when it comes to um, extraction of client-side pages. Keep in mind, for instance, what we do, and we did it already, but even that code has been improved. Uh, we discover, um, for instance, all the image, images in your client-side page. Uh, or we try to discover them as much as possible, as far as we can go, and we will add them to your uh, file selection, uh, files collection here, and we refer to them in the web part then by a token. So we uh, we dynamically figure out where that file is located in your site, and then um, at at application time. Uh, one of the things that we also allow allow you to do on the client side page. Let's see if I have actually have an example of that one in here in this specific template uh, is to set the thumbnail uh, URL. And I might actually not have an example here. No, I'm just scrolling down from client side page to client side page here. Um, and we don't, I don't think we have an example here. No, but you can set the, uh, the thumbnail URL to a, um, um, a URL in your site collection, like inside assets and whatever. And that 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 URL, that thumbnail, um, you, you might be familiar with it or not, but if I open a page here, uh, that thumbnail is actually showing up there. And this thumbnail, you can edit separate from, for instance, the background image in your header, if you want to. 
So you can set a separate thumbnail. That thumbnail will then be, say, you create a client side page without uh, a, a header background, but still you, you define a thumbnail. Then that thumbnail will be um, exposed in like the news web part, for instance, here. Uh, so that's a, a nice way. We can you can actually create those pages now uh, through the engine. Um, while working a lot with these uh, source sites, um, um, or if you work a lot with extracting templates um, and also applying templates, um, and, and for instance, if you use the engine uh, with a customer, you say, can you please run this template on your site? But you will have to specify these parameters on the PowerShell commandlet, uh, et cetera, or you have to specify uh, these parameters on the commandlet to get the template. That's a bit cumbersome and it's, uh, it's easy to make errors. And um, something we've been thinking about for a long time, we started to implement now, and that is the ability for you to um, uh, create a configuration file of your settings uh, that you want to uh, use while extracting. Uh, currently only while extracting, but this will also come uh, during application. And if we look at that configuration file, it is, uh, it's a JSON file. So we know that the provisioning template is XML, but the configuration file is JSON. And uh, this is currently what we allow you to do. So you can specify which of the handlers you want to run. So if you're only interested, for instance, in exporting the list, you just specify one handler. There is a schema behind it. Right now, you'll see that the schema is pointing to my core repo, but this will be located in a central location, uh, uh, which we probably will do before Monday. Um, and um, so bit the schema, we have these uh, completion functionalities in VS Code, for instance. So you can you can pick from the handler that you want to run uh, easily. Um, we allow you now, when, we, when you extract a template, you might have noticed that the navigation elements in the template always have the remove existing nodes set to false which is annoying a lot of people, including myself, but we, we basically say always, we do not delete things unless you explicitly tell us to. And that's why we always set that one to false. And that means that if you reapply that template to an existing site, the navigation nodes will be added to the existing navigation, which is annoying. Uh, now uh, with this configuration file, a note is only through the configuration file. We, we have no um, uh, other parameters exposed uh, through the command list for that, you will have to use a configuration file. Uh, with this configuration file, you can say, listen, set those properties to true. We want we want the template that is being generated to have that remove existing nodes property set to true. Um, what we also allow you to do, and this is very interesting, if you move from one tenant to the other, is that you exclude author information where possible. It's not the custom web parts and the kind of stuff you do, don't do, um, but uh, for instance, in the page header, uh, we will remove author information. In the news web part, we will remove author information. So we will actually physically clear out the attributes uh, of um, the JSON for a news web part or the attributes on the header tag in the XML and remove the information about authors in there. If you want to export all the client side pages, not just the home page, which is the default behavior. You just say include all client side pages. And uh, this is a big one. Uh, I think if you want to export a specific list instead of all lists, you can now specify this list section. Then you have a list collection in here and per list you can say, okay, export this specific list and include all the items in that list and give me only these fields. So we basically go through through the items in the list and we'll create data rows for that specific list and we will include the fields that you request. If you don't specify a query, we will just dump everything in there, including the internal fields. Um, and you can also say, listen, I only want the ones that match this query. Now this is just an ordering query, but this is a full camel query. So you can do where's and et cetera, if you want to. And we will filter the items in the list to, um, uh, to this query and then export the data as data rows. This is very nice, for instance, if you have calendar items in your site that you want to move over. Um, for instance, here you see that specific query that I use. Um, you can also set skip empty fields to true. That basically means if the category is not set for that specific item, we will not include it as a data row um, uh, or a, a field in that data row. Um, 
So that's that's an option you can uh, can do. Uh, you can also just say, listen, I don't want the camel query, but I want to limit to number of fields, uh, specific fields, and you just leave out the camel query. And uh, what will come uh, is also um, um, this property include attachments. Um, I'm still coding on that. And there is uh, the option of setting the like the row limit to like I only want the first ten rows, for instance. Um, so this is uh, you will you will see that we will expand this configuration file more and more. Um, and our goal is just to not introduce new functionality in the in the old way of configuring the engine. If you use the engine with uh, C sharp, you basically use a creation creation information object. Um, you um, can still do that. So all the all the code is still backwards, 100% backwards compatible, but we will introduce new functionality in this uh, configuration format here, um, which makes it a bit easier for you to control bulk um, exports, etc., of multiple sites. We're pretty excited about this. Um, it, it makes your life a lot easier. Um, as I said, it, I, I lost track almost of all the changes we've done in the engine. Uh, it's it's an it's a pretty major release we're doing on Monday. A lot of new functionality and a lot of new um, um, uh, um, performance and um, stability improvements. Because we're releasing the September um, will be set to default, it does not mean that everything in that schema is implemented yet. There's still gaps, um, but just that you know that. Uh, so don't expect the full schema to be 100% functional yet. All the functionality you have today in the old schema is 100% functional in the new schema. The new things uh, in the schema will slowly um, trickle in and most likely the majority uh, will happen basically after Ignite when we um, release, we'll do a new release basically next month. Uh, and that's it, uh, that's it for me. Uh, Bur, uh, sorry, uh, Irvin, can you can you show some examples? Um, you did this in a sorry, you did this in a completely one hundred percent from a developer perspective. But can you show yeah. some of the provisioning examples, so getting people excited on on the upcoming templates? Because these are the Lookbook V two templates, um, which will be available for anybody to take advantage uh, quite soon. Um, yep. And we've been now testing uh, the new designs, and these designs are coming from our SharePoint design team. So Katie and a few other people are running the designs, and then we are now creating the open source templates for everybody to take advantage. Mm -hmm. You want me to go to some sites? Yeah, show show yeah. some examples which are coming because I, I think that's insanely interesting. There's a really good set of uh, sites and designs uh, which anybody can then use as a starting point. Um, yeah. And with Here. example content. And all of this is what you're getting when you provision a template. Yeah. Global marketing. Um, some of them are hub sites, some of them are not. Um, this is a hub site. Um, and there is a uh, Let's see, we have leadership connection, for instance, is one. Um, and, and they all have different themes, so the themes are now provisioned on site level, not on tenant level anymore, uh, which is also a great improvement for basically not um, um, affecting you, your tenant. Um, everything yep. is contained in the template, in the site. Nothing will be provisioned to your tenant. Which means that you can test these templates in an existing tenant, which help on creating, for example, example content and structures in an existing tenant. And hey, then if you realize that, oh, this is actually is exactly what I want to do, I'll just flip the content and then you can do a swap URLs and swap uh, route uh, to maybe the, the new uh, created experience yep. and all of that. Yep. So. Um, this the the designs are really cool. Um, they and templates are all available. Uh, we are working now on the provisioning service and lookbook uh, uh, site uh, changes. Um, all of that is coming, obviously, in eight night time frame. Um, really cool looking stuff. Um, if you are already like, hey, hey, I want to get access on on some of these or want to test this, um, the, the October release of the engine and PowerShell is coming on Monday. 
and then already today uh, these templates are actually available in GitHub, but those templates are using capabilities which are using uh, assuming the October release of the engine. So it's good to be aware of that. Now from yeah, a timing one, perspective, yeah, sorry, sorry. One last thing, I showed you this configuration file. Now, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you have the, pressure, the, now you have pressure, so. No, yeah, it's, it's, I'm not uh, announcing another service device, uh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, but uh, how does this configuration like this? So uh, you say uh, whatever. This is how you configure the PowerShell commandlet. You say just configuration this and you point to the JSON file. And you will also be able to actually send in an object. So you can tweak that object through PowerShell if you want to. Instead of actually pointing to a file, you can send in an object uh, containing a string or an actually JSON object. Uh, so that will come. Cool. That was and it. Uh, one more question from Chris before we go to Paolo. When ex exporting lists and importing, are they added using as, uh, so is it maintaining author and the dates when it's actually adding those? Uh, no. It's it's good to know that it's actually creating those using the identity which is getting used. Yeah. At least for now. So one step at a time in the right direction. Good. Uh, thank you, Irvin, for that one. Awesome stuff. Um, we're insanely excited on the on the new designs and the new capabilities on the engine because now anybody can provision these templates to any tenant in the world, and you'll get exactly the same end result, and that's super super cool. Mm -hmm.